Hi, my name is Margaret Welch and I'm going to be discussing an article called The Pain Hustlers by Evan Hughes. Um, it's an article in the New York Times um, and it discusses pharmaceutical um, drug companies that push uh, opioid painkillers. Um, and uh, one of these companies is called Insys Therapeutics. Um, and the way that they kind of go about um, looking for doctors, like they kind of single them out. Like one of the, one of such doctors, um, his name was Stephen Chen. And he basically was, you know, a strict narcotics um, user, like not user, but like that's what he prescribed to people. Um, and he had really good credentials. He went to like the University of Washington and he went to um, Cornell Medical College um, and, you know, the Mo Memorial, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Um, and like he was a pain doctor and he was basically involved in a really expensive lawsuit and um, insight insist therapeutics reached out to him and, hey, and was like hey you could make like millions of dollars um because the drugs are just so expensive um and like the head of this company's name is john kapoor um and he had numerous cd um pharmaceutical drug companies before uh starting insis um and they you know these companies hire like um women between the ages of 20 and 30 um you know because the sales would be more like as pharmaceutical sales reps um and there's also a sense of like naivete about it um because they don't necessarily you know all the ins and out know all the ins and outs of you know the the business and what's involved in um and how it affects the patients and all that um and one of these highly addictive drugs that they uh sells for uh, was called uh, transmucosal intermediate release fentanyl um and it's for cancer pain um, and it's really highly addictive and it's, um, it's just not, it's not very healthy. Um, and there was another account of a veteran from Iraq actually who was decorated, um, who got really addicted on a different off-label, um, drug that this company sold. Um, and it like ruined his life. Um, like his doctor prescribed, his doctor who, who worked with Insys actually prescribed him like two to three times the amount um, that the FDA had approved. So you're supposed to only take like four to six doses a day and his doctor prescribed him 12 and it's, it's so highly addictive and um, he like foreclosed on his house and like he couldn't live his normal life. Like he slept under his desk at work and his desk was chock full of these drugs. And he had to, like, be, um, yeah, like, like, during his withdrawal, he had to be, like, sedated. And uh, it was just, it was just really sad um, what happened to this, you know, poor man. And, like, the drugs are so expensive that one patient can bring in six figures in profit, which is just repulsive. <laughs> That's just way too much money. Um, and so Kapoor has been arrested and is waiting um, for his trial in January, but... He pled guilty, so um, they aren't really sure what's going to happen with his case, if he's going to get off scot-free or not. Um, and I, like, the moral dilemma with this is, like, shady businessmen take advantage of, you know, doctors, like, you know, greedy doctors or doctors who need money um, and who are in turn taking advantage of these, their, their patients who are in pain, who are looking for, like, relief. And, you know, pain is a really serious, you know, thing to experience and of course you want relief from it and you're going to trust the doctor who has a degree and who you think has your best interest in mind but not all of them do clearly and I just think that is just so corrupt um that they're taking advantage of these people who are just you know who are just in pain um and you know here like I knew that the prescription drugs were more expensive I had no idea how much more expensive um like of course you know, heroin's going to be cheaper than something that you're going to have to pay so, so, so much money for. Um, but the problem with heroin is um, that there's so much in it. There's so much crap. Like, it's not, you know, it's not approved by the FDA or anything. So, um, like, people overdose and, like, die all the time. Like, it, it seems like I, it seems like everyone knows at least a knows of at least one person who's either overdosed on heroin or has overdosed and died from heroin. Like, I know multiple people who've known people that that's happened to. 
thank God that it hasn't happened to my family specifically, um, anyone that I'm close to personally, like friends or otherwise. Um, but I'm kind of like bracing myself for it because it seems like it's just so common. It would be impossible to not know someone personally that this has happened to. Um, so, and that's like the only reason that I would want to legalize I would support legalizing all drugs, just not so that there could be more access for public consumption, because that would just be horrible. But, you know, for those who are already, are already addicted, like, I think it would be good for the government to be able to keep their eye on, you know, these um, people who manufacture drugs. Um, but clearly it isn't, you know, it isn't a perfect system now because all of these highly addictive opioid drugs are being sold, you know, that have been technically approved by the FDA. Um, through these pharmaceutical sales, pharmaceutical companies. Um, and I think that it's absolutely, completely wrong for doctors to prescribe people, um, prescribe drugs to people who are, like, desperate for relief. And, like, to, like not obviously, like, you know, the, the whole reason that they're going to the doctor is for relief, but, like, for the doctor to take advantage of that is just so repulsive, I think. <sighs> so... That's why I'm so passionate about um, this this topic, and I just wanted to share um, that article. So thank you for your time. Bye.